let's get into talking about phase A, which is the architecture vision phase. Phase A sits at the top of the ADM cycle just after the preliminary phase is finished. The purpose, the main purpose of the vision phase is to develop the high level vision to be delivered. You also may obtain the approval for the statement of architecture work. The statement of architecture work contains things such as the scope, resources, a roadmap and a schedule, any KPIs and metrics, and a communications plan for the architecture work. Remember, we treat the architecture work as a project, and it has a budget, it has a scope, it's going to have a schedule. So, the objectives of the vision phase. Number one, develop a high-level aspirational vision of the capabilities and business value to be delivered. And number two is to obtain approval for a statement of architecture work. The approach. Number one is to create the request for architecture work, which is going to define what is in and what is out of scope. What you're going to find is if you don't define the scope or if you define the scope too broadly, you're basically taking on a massive project to try to define the baseline and target architectures in one huge scoop. Especially if you're starting off with very low architecture capability or you've never really done this before, the architecture work is going to define your scope and that's really what's going to get this project to succeed. Creating the architecture vision, we'll get into that when we get into the steps. Going through the ADM business scenarios process. So what we do in the TOGAF world is we use business scenarios to define the problems to get to dig down deeper. And I'll just show you real quick what a business scenario looks like. So you start with a problem. The problem lives in an environment. That environment has objectives. There are human actors, which are the employees and the customers and other people that operate within this environment. There are computer actors, which are systems. There are roles and responsibilities for all of these things. And then you are going to have to go back and refine the problem, refine the problem. See, every problem has this sort of business scenarios process. Within the TOGAS spec, it goes into these steps and how to really go through them in detail. As usual, I'm going to fly through the inputs because I find them to be the least helpful bits. You've got the reference materials, request for architecture work, these, some of these things, the business principles, they were created in the preliminary phase, uh, tailored architecture framework again in the preliminary phase, populated architecture repository. You'll notice that a lot of these things are outputs of the last phase going to become inputs. The ones on screen, I'm calling them common inputs because you'll find a lot of the phases, almost all of the architecture definition phases use these things and there's really no point talking about them. Steps. Number one, establish the architecture project. Okay, this is the kickoff meeting. This is your schedule. You've got a project manager. You've got, you know, we're going to do this within two weeks, this within four weeks. You've got tasks. Identify stakeholders, their concerns, and the business requirements. Now, identifying stakeholders is a super important part of the TOGA for, um, process because the stakeholders are the people who are going to. Uh, a, they're going to help you succeed by help by you know answering your questions. B, they're the ones you're trying to satisfy, so they give you the requirements, and you turn around and give them a solution that meets their requirements. Uh, C, you do need to learn how to talk to different people. You're going to have the chief financial officer. You're going to have the CIO, CEO. You're going to have some low, you know frontline IT staff, the sales staff, the call center staff. Every department is going to need to be talked to, and those have stakeholders in anything that you do, but you're talked to using different language, different diagrams, different documents. You do not show a lot of the deep technical stuff to the chief financial officer. You don't need to show a lot of the financial numbers to the call center, things like that. Once again, confirming business goals. We did this in the last phase as well. Evaluate your business capabilities. Now, we've already talked about the architecture capability. In this phase, you're going to talk about what your company is good at, what it's not good at, sort of a scale to one to 10 type of thing in each of the things that you're trying to do, how well do you do them, and uh, 
you know, to what degree. Okay. So the readiness for transformation, you'll find this will pop up, especially when you get into the migration planning, the opportunities and solutions phases. But the readiness for transformation is an evaluation of how your company adapts to change. A lot of companies do embrace change and they do go rapidly, sometimes to their detriment where they go too rapidly. But there are companies where change is expected. And then there are other companies where change is extremely difficult. I was recently on a project where even getting the minor version number change on a piece of software, getting approval for that was just too difficult. We ended up implementing a version behind the most recent because that was already approved and trying to get a version number, minor version number to get approved would have been too much. So some companies have very difficult times adapting to any change and some companies are having a lot of easier time. Defining the scope for your vision. Okay, number seven, the architecture principles. So you've defined them. Now, you, now you're into the process of creating your uh, vision. You're creating some of your solutions at a high level. You need to confirm that your principles are still working for you. Develop the architecture vision. Okay, the architecture vision is what you're seeing the target architecture being. It's a very high level, but you kind of defined what the problems are. And now you're going to say it's, it's actually right in the first phase here, phase A. You get to say, okay, this is what we're probably going to implement. Something like this. It's boxes and lines. It might be a very short piece of paper, one or two pages to describe this. It's very high level. You don't know the details yet, but you kind of got an idea of the solution. The target architecture value. So what is your company going to be able to do with this new architecture? What are they going to be able to earn? What are they going to be able to save? Our change is going to be easier, quicker. Okay, what are the value to the business of what you're uh, proposing? And the transformation risks and mitigation activities is number 10. And number 11 is the statement of architecture work, which is the fine. Once you've got your vision, you go and sell your vision and they say, yes, go and develop me that. And you get approvals. Those are the 11 steps of the vision phase. The outputs. Once again, these are documents that are created during these steps. We do talk about them during the, uh, the steps. You've got um, changes to some of your existing documents. You've got a, a vision, of course, the draft architecture document version 0 0.1 is a high level draft of your uh, architecture. The communications plan talks about how you communicate with stakeholders, any additional content that goes in the architecture repository. The uh, artifacts listed on screen, I'm not going to really go through them, but, but the vision phase, you do create some uh, diagrams and a matrix at least, and your assignment. So now that we've gone through the vision phase, reading chapter seven of the spec should be a lot easier. You can go ahead and do that. I have added chapter uh, section 10 to this course, which goes through each of the steps of the vision phase one by one in more detail. So go ahead and check out section 10 if you want to get more deeper onto that. So that's it for preliminary phase A. Let's have a little quiz about what you learned.